Hey guys, so this video is going to be doing a full turn in a game of Battletech. In this game we have a battle master and a peacekeeper fighting each other. Peacekeeper is already taking a little damage to the center torso, took some damage to the right leg, and the battle master took some damage to the arms. So basically we're just going to start it off with initiative. So we're going to start off with the peacekeeper's dice, the star league dice, Let's see what he gets. Five, not so hot of a roll. Let's see the Lyran dice for the Battlemaster. Six, all right, neither one's rolling hot, but the Battlemaster won the initiative. So when you win initiative, the loser moves first. The Peacekeeper is gonna go in at a full run at six running speed. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he ran, we'll get a two modifier against the attacker in the back. And covering five unique hexes, he'll get a two modifier in the front against the Battlemaster attacking him. The Battlemaster is just going to come charging right in, too. He's also going to be a four six movement. So we got a one, two, three, four, five, six. So he also covered five unique hexes and ran. So it's going to be a two two as well. So now that all the mechs have moved, we're going to move into the weapons declaration phase. So the peacekeeper lost the initiative, so the peacekeeper will declare weapons first. So each of these mechs have a pilot of three, four, so three gunnery, four piloting, and the peacekeeper is going to be firing the plasma rifle, the SRM-2, the heavy PPC, and the snub nose PPC. So what you'll notice is on the heavy PPC, it's at an eight. All the other weapons, you count up 3 gunnery, 4, 5, 6, 7. So all the other weapons are 7. But if you notice, the heavy PPC has a minimum range of 3 hexes. So we can count 1, 2, 3. So we have 3 hexes out to the Battlemaster. Now the formula for minimum range is going to be minimum range minus target distance plus 1. So 3 minus 3 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So that's where that 8 comes from. 7 plus 1 is 8. So, the Peacekeeper is going to fire a Plasma Rifle, SRM-2, Heavy PPC, and Snub Nose PPC. The Battlemaster is going to fire a whole flurry of weapons. On the record sheet, I've already written out the numbers. We're going to go with a 7 for two medium lasers, 7 for a medium laser, the first two were ERs, a 7 for an SRM-6, a 7 for one more ER medium laser, a 7 for a medium laser, and a 7 for a Gauss rifle. Now the Gauss rifle has a 2 hex minimum range. So we're just outside of that and the Battlemaster doesn't get a detriment for using it. Now that all shots have been declared, we're going to start shooting. So we have the Peacekeeper, we'll start with that big gun, the heavy PPC, looking for an 8. That is a 7, just short. Next up we have the Snub Nose PPC, looking for a 7. That rolled a 5, that's a no-go. And the Plasma Rifle for a 7. That's a hit with a 10. And then we have the SRM-2 for a 7. That is a 6, just short, just short. So, we're going to roll the damage on that Plasma Rifle. It's doing 10 damage. 10 damage to the 5. So. 10 damage goes to 5, 5 is the right leg. So next up we have to determine what the heat that comes with the plasma rifle is on the Battlemaster. We're going to take one dice and we're going to roll it. 5 heat, that's an additional 5 heat to the Battlemaster. What you're going to notice here are two lines on the heat scale. The 2 is where the Battlemaster would have been at with all the weapons he was firing. But the 7 is where the additional heat from the plasma rifle comes from. So now this mech is going to suffer a minus one movement point in the next movement phase. So next up we have the Battlemaster shooting back. So the Battlemaster is going to start off with the big gun, the Gauss Rifle. We need a seven to hit. That is a ten. The Gauss Rifle hits the Peacekeeper. Next up we're going to knock out the SRM-6 to get the, get the odd weapon out of the way. So we get the seven on that one. That is a seven right there. So the Battlemaster has definitely got his aim on target this turn. Next up we're gonna roll two medium two of the ER medium lasers. That is a hit and a miss. So we have one ER medium laser that missed so far. 
the other medium laser of the three. So that's a miss for the other ER medium laser. So only one ER medium laser hit. Now we have the two regular medium lasers. That is a miss and a hit. So one of each laser hit. They're each five points, so they're uh, same point damage. So we have the Gauss rifle, the medium laser, and the SRM-6. So far I've done the damage for the two medium lasers and the Gauss rifle. Gauss rifle hit him in the leg, medium laser did this last five points of damage on this leg, and the torso damage is from the other medium laser. Next up we're going to do the SRM-6 on camera so that way we can see how all that's going to work. Now this SRM launcher has an Artemis system. Artemis system helps more missiles to hit, makes it a little more accurate. So we're going to roll on the cluster table here on the six chart. There we go. And we're going to see how many we get. So that's 11. So an 11 plus 2 would be 13. So that means all six missiles hit. So this is where things like the golden BB come in. So basically it gives you six chances to possibly critical hit the center torso. So let's pull the dice out. I have. And we're going to start off rolling the first four missiles. So, we have a 7 center torso, we have a 9, another 7 for center torso, we have two 9s and a 7. Okay, so, we have 4 to the left leg, 4 to the center torso total. So we have those all marked off, and now we have the last two missiles. Norm normally people are looking for a headshot or that magical center torso critical. That is going to be center torso, and then we have a 10 at the left arm. So if you look at the uh, cardboard that comes in the intro box set, you'll see that when a mech takes a certain amount of damage, let's see, let's get this thing zoomed in, a certain amount of damage here at the top, you'll see it's a plus one. So at 20 points of damage, the mech needs to make a piloting skill roll. Now, it's going to be a plus one because Peacekeeper took well over 20 points of damage. Just the Gauss Rifle and one medium laser sent him over that. So his piloting skill is going to be a four. So we're going to have to roll five to make sure he keeps standing. Now piloting skill rolls are very critical when it comes to the physical phase. If you're right next to a mech and you fall down, you can get a full body kick and potentially get your head kicked off, get a limb kicked off, or something really bad, especially when it's mechs this size. We have a 95 ton Peacekeeper and the 85 ton Battlemaster, and they can do a lot of damage with melee attacks. But because of the distance, it's not too detrimental, but hopefully he doesn't fall down for his sake. So, 4 plus 1 is 5, so we got an 11, so we're good to go. So, next up we would move on to the physical phase. They're, they're not close enough to do physical attack, there's no one else in on the board, so there's no physicals there. So we would skip that phase and we double check the heat, make sure the heat's all good to go. As you could see before, the Battlemaster, he was forced to jump up to seven heat, and the Peacekeeper, from all the weapons he fired, he, he's already at five heat. So both of them have a minus one movement modifier for the next turn. So let's move into another turn. As we go through the ending phase, we just pull off all the dice, clear the board, and then we start rolling again. So, Star League dice are still for the Peacekeeper. We got an 8. And we'll do the Lyran dice for the Battlemaster again. That's a 3. So this time the Peacekeeper won the initiative. So, the Battlemaster is going to move first. This is where strategizing is going to come in. So, the Battlemaster, at a minus 1 movement modifier, is down to a 3-5 movement. So, he can only run back, or he can only walk backwards 3, walk forwards 3, or run forwards five. So you can't run forward and make a turn and still get a two, modif two defensive modifier in the front. So if he moves forward, then he runs the risk of the Peacekeeper getting behind him. So in, to be defensive, you can move backwards and get a modifier and only walk. Put some distance between the two mechs. So we're gonna go one, two, three at the walking speed. Now, it's not gonna give him very, very high of a defensive modifier in the front, but the shots are going to be easier because he has a low attacker modifier in the back for just walking. Now, the Peacekeeper has to think ahead. Okay, so if he advances forward, 
then the Bowmaster could potentially get behind him the next turn. Or the Bowmaster could try to take cover in the woods. So it would give him a good good position. So the Peacekeeper's gonna jump. He's gonna jump forward one, two, three. Now jumping is not hindered by the heat negative to the movement points. Jumping, you're just firing off your jump jets. Um, so he just decided to jump forward. In this position, on the next turn, if the Bowmaster decided to back up into the woods or try to go back behind the woods, then he could just jump forward from here, one, two, three, to this heavy woods. That gives him a great defensive modifier up at four if he jumped there. So the Bowmaster would not probably want to go this way because it would be really hard to shoot back at him. So we'll start up by adding the dot movement dice. So we have a three in the back for jumping, and then we have a two in the back. One for moving three X's, one for jumping. So three and two. Next, we're going to move up, move to the shooting phase. At the beginning of the shooting phase, we're going to start off with our weapons declarations. So we're going to look and count up some numbers here. So both pilots are three, four pilots. So we have a three, four, five, six, no intervening terrain. And then we have a three, six, seven. These are for short range shots. So first up with Battlemaster. Now the Battlemaster we're going to try to figure out the heat issue with. He doesn't have jump jets so he can't try to dodge that. So first off we're going to decide what weapons we want to shoot. We've got the two ER medium lasers um, in the right torso, two ER medium lasers in the left torso, and the Gauss rifle on the arm. So we see it's 7 heat. If we add these weapons up, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 21. 21 plus 1 movement is going to be a 22. 22 is 4 under the 26 that we would normally be able to dissipate. So, we need to come over here, erase the 7, bring it down to 3. So this next turn, assuming he doesn't get hit by that plasma rifle, he is going to be able to move as freely as normal. Next up, we have the Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper is still going to be blazing away with all his weapons. So, we got 7 for all of them. All of them are going to be at short range. Short range of 5, 7, and 9. 3 hexes or 4 hexes away, so we're good there. So, here I've already marked off the ammo for the plasma rifle. And so, got to mark off the ammo for the Gauss rifle. So, that's something, good, something to always go back and check on. Make sure you mark off your ammo. Especially if you're in a campaign sense, that's still, that'll become very critical very fast. So, he actually went up one heat. Because you have 10, 12, 10 for, uh, for the heat we're going to be using. So, it's going to be 32 plus 3 for jumping. So, we're up to 35. 35 is 1 over. So, he went from 5 to 6 heat. So, he's still suffering that minus 1 movement if he decides to run next turn. Now, since all shots are simultaneous, it really doesn't matter what order you shoot in. Last turn I shot the Peacekeeper first because he lost initiative. This turn I'll just shoot the Battlemaster first because he lost initiative. So, we'll start with the Battlemaster. So we're going to roll that Gauss Rifle, see if we can land that shot right off the bat. We have a 3 right there, that is a no-go on that Gauss Rifle. Now we got the 4 ear medium lasers, we'll just roll 2 first. We got an 8 and a 7, we're good to go with those two. Now let's see if we can keep it up, get the other two to land. We have an 8 and an 8, so very good rolls. All right. This is going to do 20 points of damage, going to cause him to have another piloting skill roll. So, we will fire our shots, and the shots landed one to the arm, one to the torso, one to the torso, and another to the torso. So that was a pretty good area of shots. If you're landing shots on the torsos, you're doing all right. So the way I normally mark piloting skill roll is I normally add a third dice that has a six on it. Just just something to see. There's something going on with that mech. So next up, we're gonna have the peacekeeper fire back. So we have the peacekeeper's snub those PPC. We need seven for that to hit. That is a good hit right there. A short range, so it's full damage. Now we have the plasma rifle at a seven. That is a hit. And then we have the large laser at a seven. That's a very effective firing firing turn. So we'll start off with the high damage weapons. We have the plasma rifle. 
we're going to shoot. That's going to hit the left torso on the Battlemaster. So we're going to do 10 damage to the left torso. And then we're going to see about heat. So where's heat hit? That's five heat. So he just cannot escape this, this negative bracket. And the eight that he's now currently going to be at, that is going to give him a, a plus one to fire. So it's going to be even harder next turn. Next up, we have the Snubnose PPC. Where's that going to land? That's going to land on the right torso. Snubnose PPC of the right torso. We're going to do 10 there. And then finally, the large laser. That's going to be 8 damage. 8 to the head. Ooh, that was a good shot. So, Bellmaster is going to take 8 damage. 3, 6, 7, 8. That's all but one. All but one of the head armor. And then we're going to mark off that the pilot has taken a hit. So, what we're going to look for is we're going to see that 20 points of damage. So, 20 points of damage again, is going to give him a piloting skill roll. So, I would mark him. And since all the firing's over, we're going to check for this consciousness. We need to roll three or better. And he stays awake with a 10. So now, now that all that is done, all the damage has been dealt, now we're going to roll piloting skill rolls. Both mechs took 20 points of damage at least, so now they're both going to be up at a five. First up, we have the Peacekeeper with the Star League dice. That is a two right there. That is not the number you want to see happening. Let's see what the Battlemaster is going to do. Is he going to stay standing? Yep, he is going to be staying standing. So even though he's at a little bit of a detriment, he still has the advantage going to the next turn. The first thing we're going to look at is the facing after a fall table. So, we only roll one die for that. We have four. So, as we can see, he's falling right on his back. Now, because he's a 95 ton mech, we are going to be doing fall damage. Now, fall damage is going to be 1 per 10 tons that the mech weighs. This mech weighs 95 tons. He's going to be doing 10 damage for himself. So, we're going to start off with the first five. You break it into five, five cluster groups. So, there's the first five damage. That's going to the eight on the back. Eight on the back is going to be the rear left torso. So, we'll just mark it off as normal. And now we do the other five damage. That's a head hit. Ouch. That mech must have flown backwards pretty hard. So, taking five to the head. And he's taking his pilot hit. Now, we got to remember a couple things. Now that the mech has fallen, you have to make a piloting skill roll to make sure that the pilot didn't smash his head on the uh, keyboard, on the joysticks, on the back of the chair, get whiplash, anything like that. So, we need to roll that 5 again to make sure the pilot did not hurt himself. That's a 10, so we're good to go there. Now we have to roll this consciousness roll to make sure that he's still awake. So we have 5, so we're good to go on that. The pilot is still awake. So at this point, we do not have any physical attacks to do. That mech fell, that mech did not. So we clear the dice. And we're back to initiative. So, we'll roll the Star League dice for the Peacekeeper. We got an 8. We have a Lyran dice for the Battlemaster. That's at a 9. So first we need to determine what the Peacekeeper wants to do. The Peacekeeper's movement is terrible right now. He is currently at a 3-5 just from the heat, and he loses two more movement points just by standing up. So, the mech is probably, because, it, because if he tried to stand up and run into those light woods, he'd be facing the wrong direction. The Battlemaster could get right behind him. So really, he, this turn, this mech is going to have to just take, it, take a direct hit, pretty much. Um... So basically, I would have him stand up right here, 
kind of facing a general direction. Because right now we know the Battle Master is suffering heat effects as well. Down to a 3 5. Um, thinking about the movement, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You'd just be facing the heavy woods. You could turn 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Get right there. It'd be, it'd be a harder shot. You'd be in cover. That would actually that would actually want to that actually prevent the peacekeeper from wanting to stay there because it would be a two defensive modifier for the bellmaster and that's within a minimum range of the heavy PPC. So right now it'd just be a gamble as to where the peacekeeper could go because either way he's not getting a very high modifier. So in an attempt to stay away from the bellmaster and keep all those short range medium lasers um, as ineffective, peacekeeper will stand up facing this direction, running. One, two, three. Now, Peacekeeper gets a two in the rear, and he doesn't get anything in the front. We normally annotate that with a six, because it's very rare you'll actually get a light mech that gets a six in the front. So, he basically has no defensive modifier, but he's trying to get some distance, at least. So, the Battlemaster is going to want to keep out of real harm's way this turn. So really, I mean, he could actually move into the heavy woods, and being in this heavy woods, because it's a straight line down, he could decide as the defender to take both these woods, and that'll block line of sight. So the Battlemaster could take this turn to cool off, but that also gives the Peacekeeper a chance to cool off. The Battlemaster can be a little more heat efficient, so keeping on the push up against the overheating Peacekeeper might be worth it. So, we will just do a walking movement with the Battlemaster. We're going to go one, two, three. Yep, three. That's all he can move because of his heat level right now. So, we'll actually do a one, two, three. And now I'll put him within range of his regular medium lasers. So, he only has a one working against him. And he also only has a one working for him. So... Since Peacekeeper lost, we'll go ahead and figure out his shots. Now he isn't suffering heat modifiers to his firing. So we're going to go 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, because the front arc extends out these hexes, we have to torso twist as well. So we're going to take it from these hexes to these hexes. So he's facing out that way. He's got from there to over here. So the Bellmaster is down the front arc, and we'll have to figure out our shots. So the Peacekeeper's declared shots. He's going to have only shoot a plasma rifle and a heavy PPC. This will cool him down far enough that he actually won't have any heat effects at the end of this turn. Because 10 plus 15, that's 25. He can dissipate 34. So 25 plus 2, 27. That leaves 7 left over. He was at 6 heat. So he's actually negative 1 on the heat scale. Now the Battle Master... He can fire a bunch of weapons. He won't lose all his heat, but you'll get to a very manageable position. So let's look at the weapons first. Now, you'll see that with a 3-4 three, with a three, four pilot, it would be 3, 4, and then 0. So it should be a 4 normally. However, we are up at level 8. Or we were up at level 8 on the scale. So that's actually going to give him a plus 1 to the modifier fire. That's why he's up to a 5. Now... Because of the weapons he's firing, four ER medium lasers and a Gauss rifle, that's going to come up to 21 heat. 21 plus 1 for walking, it's 22. So 26 minus 22 is 4 heat. And so 8 minus 4 is 4. So he's actually now below even the lowest heat modifier. So he needs 5 on all his weapons. We'll fire the Peacekeeper first. We'll see if he can land that heavy PPC with a 6. That is a hit with an 11. And then that plasma rifle. That's going to be a 6. That is a hit. So more potential heat or more heat coming at the Battlemaster. So we'll roll the heavy PPC first. So that's going to be 15 damage to the right arm. So the Battlemaster is taking 15 to the right arm. There's some potential for damage there. So we have 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15. Almost completely stripped the armor off that arm. Now we have the plasma rifle. 
That's going to be to the 9. We have a left leg hit. So 10 damage to the left leg. 8, 10. Alrighty. So he definitely has a Paladin skill roll because that's a lot more than 20 damage. So, next up we're going to roll that heat. Or one die. Five heat again. This Bellmaster is just not doing very well against this heat. Let's actually move up, bump him up to a nine for the next turn. So, in return, the Bellmaster is going to shoot back. So first up we have the Goss Rifle. We need a five. That's a hit with a six. Now we have two of the four medium lasers. We have an eight and an eight. So those both hit. And we have an eight and a six. So all the Battlemaster's weapons hit. Which means we're going to have a Paladin skill roll for the Peacekeeper. So let's see where that Goss Rifle hits. Now you're going to look and see how the Battlemaster is facing the Peacekeeper. When you follow the line directly out the side, that is going to be the end of the front arc. So this is actually hitting the Peacekeeper's left side. And on the to hit table, you'll see there is a left side table right there. So that's what we're going to be using this turn. So let's start off with the Gauss Rifle. 15 points of damage, left side of the Peacekeeper. It's going to be to the 8. 8 left side. That's going to be a center torso hit on the Peacekeeper. He's not doing too well as far as armor goes there. 5, 10, 15. Alrighty. So there are four, 4 bubbles remaining on the Peacekeeper right here. There's 4 right in the middle. So next up, we have first of our ER medium lasers. Seven right here and a nine. So let's see what we got. We're gonna do a seven on the left side for a left torso hit. So five damage to Peacekeeper's left torso. And then we got the left side nine. That's gonna be the right torso. So it's healthy spread across the torsos. Now we have the last two ER medium lasers. We have that two fours, so that's a good combination of damage. So we're gonna do ten damage to the left arm. Three, six, nine, ten. So they both have piloting skill rolls now. There weren't any headshots, and the only damage done was twenty plus points of damage. So we'll roll first for the peacekeeper, see if he falls down. We have five or better. We're good to go with an eight. Now we need a fiber bear with Battlemaster. We're good to go with the six. So at this point in time, there's no physical attacks, and we would move on with the next turn. So that is three basic turns in Battletech. So right now I'm going to give a brief overview of the firing arcs. So for the Peacekeeper we'll be working with, we're going to start out with the right firing arc. We got right there, all the way over to here. That's the front arc. And as I discussed before, you can change it. So it goes from these three hexes to these three hexes for the right torso twist, and it goes from these hexes to these hexes on the left torso twist. So when you're looking at it like this, say you don't want a torso twist. Say you got a mech over here, and you also might want to try a secondary shot over here with your left arm. So basically you could turn the left arm to try to shoot over here, but still keep shots going that way with the rest of the weapons. Now, you may sometimes wind up with the mech behind you. Now, you do have one chance to shoot at them. You can do a torso twist in one direction, and then use the arm to go after them. Because the arm arc goes out through these back hexes on the corners. The rear arc is the hexes straight behind it. Now, you would basically torso twist, and then... Now, these, now these three hexes, if you torso twist to the left, these are your front three hexes. So this would be your arm hex right here, that you can aim backwards with. So if this mech is in a good good range with a bad modifier, you turn with that heavy PPC and throw a 15 point shot through his chest, that's going to be very worthwhile. Now incoming fire is determined solely based on how the mech is standing. Torso twisting doesn't affect it. So if you have shots coming in from anywhere, from directly outside here, 
anything that comes into your hex, into your hex from anywhere on this side of that, would be hitting your front armor. Now, if you're coming through this back side, or this back side, these, these side hexes, then that would be left and right, uh, right side shots, respectively. And then anything coming through the rear torso, that is going to, or through the rear side, is going to be rear torso shots. So I'll bring out a, a picture that really shows that. So this image right here is one that I got off the Baltic forums that shows incoming fire. So you can see, like I showed originally, everything from the half hex to the front, that's going to be incoming to the front arc. And then anything from the sides coming that side hex side, that's going to be side hits. And then from the rear, it extends out and you shoot through the rear. Now this right here, by the army painter, is this awesome straight edge line that you can use. You don't need to use any physical object. You can see directly where the shots are going, center hex, center hex. And it's a very, very good tool to have. These things sold out the second we found out that we had them in our store. So that is just kind of a run through, a uh, couple standard turns in Battletech, and hope that helped. See you guys later.